Hey everyone, as you probably know, I deal with a lot of rhetoric and propaganda and blatant lies being espoused by many of the proponents and pundits or the editorial board that is a representation, that is the voice of the CBC. But I also recognize, and I've always, in any other past videos, hey, there are contributors from time to time, or there are, are articles or information presented by some of those who contributed to CBC that are honest and objective, and offering a counter narrative to the status quo, to the established narrative. And I always give kudos and praise where it's due, and I'm going to do it right now for this particular article. Headline, CBC News. Now, of course, it is an opinion piece. So once again, that is another cause and effect and correlation that I've seen time and time again is, you know, people that aren't part of the established base of the CBC, those are external contributors that get to sneak in or have their opinions or their voices heard, I guess, because CBC kind of has to, right? That would probably be written right in to the policy of the CBC is you kind of every once in a while have to throw outsiders the bone and let them say what they have to say, even though it's so minimal that it's such a tiny representation. But hey, at least they are somewhat following the rules, right? And at least trying to pretend to be willing to give other people a voice on their platform. Anyways, like I say, headline, raising the basic personal amount, not the minimum wage, is the way to help low-income workers. <gasps> Beautiful. Exactly. I think about all these people in the media that, or these political pundits or these proponents of less leftism or collectivism or socialism or oh they care about the poor right exactly well if you care about the poor hey how about telling the government how about telling your political masters your your rulers hey how about you just stop plundering the poor right and taking from them a substantial portion of the productive income and the productive labor or the results and the rewards that they've gained from hard work and effort yeah you don't need to raise the minimum wage, right? Because once again, minimum wage, what, when you raise that, what happens? Just look back 40 years. Look at the stagnation of wages in correlation to the inflation of prices. Yeah, you get a wage increase, but then the government just look, oh, more money to take. Let's take more. Eh? And you see it. That keeps happening over and over and over again. No, just like this Martin Corbett is suggesting, no, if you care about the poor, leave their paychecks alone and allow them keep, to keep and maintain or retain that money that they've worked so hard for. That's the way to truly help the poor. And you know what? No bureaucracy, no big government needed or necessary. We all want the poor in Canada to be better off, but increasing the minimum wage just isn't the way to do it. There has been endless debate about the minimum wage lately. One side argues that a $15 minimum wage will raise the standard of living and help stimulate the economy, while the other side points to the increased labor costs leading to massive layoffs. In Ontario, the Wynn government has framed the debate as a battle between government and business, with the government seemingly taking the moral high ground by standing up for low-income workers while businesses try to slash benefits and increase profits. But while everyone's fighting over minimum wage stats and numbers, one option seems to have been overlooked. Increase the basic personal amount to reflect the standard of living. This would put more money in the hands of the working poor, help stimulate the economy, and would also not have any effects on labor costs or small business profit margins. The basic personal amount, also called the basic personal exemption or BPE, is a tax credit available to all those who pay income tax. Hashtag taxation is theft. It represents the primary value of income that can be earned without being subject to taxes. The BPE is $11,809 federally and varies by province ranging from $8,160 in PEI to $18,915 in Alberta, where the minimum wage will jump to $15 an hour in October. In Ontario, where the $15 minimum wage is slated for 2019, the BPE is $10,354. This means that the provincial government taxes all earnings over $10,000. So if you make $10,000 a year and the government just as soon as you get over that threshold and the government starts taxing you, wouldn't you be considered poor? Isn't that, I mean, just, just go and look at some of the numbers, some of these, whether it's the UN or CANDOR or the OECD or the IMF, 
if you're only making 10 grand a year in Canada, yeah, you're the poorest of the poor. You're, you're one poor person, right? <laughs> and yet the government wants to tax you the minute you make $1 over that. Do so they really care about the poor? Apparently not. Just to give you an example of how much $10,000 represents, listen to this. At $11.60 per hour, that's $23,000 per year for a typical worker. So think about that. <laughs> that's more than double of the 10,000. So think about it. the government, as soon as you get over that threshold, and even if you are someone only make $11.60 an hour, they're taxing more than half of your income. So do they really care about how poor you are? Are they really so benevolent? <laughs> Obviously not which was Ontario's minimum wage before it was raised to $14 an hour in January. Full-time minimum wage workers would not be exempt from paying provincial taxes. The BPE is also significantly less than the poverty line, which is estimated to be around 20676 for a single-person household. So one person in Canada, the, the statistical numbers to be considered poor is $20,676. So once again, double of the amount at which the point at which point the government starts to take a portion of your income <laughs> great article right let's read on this basically means that the only workers exempt from taxes are either working part-time or are living in extreme poverty this doesn't exactly fit the government's narrative about helping low-income earners <laughs> you're preaching to the choir here Here's an example prior to 2018. If you were working full-time and making minimum wage in Ontario, you would pay $850 in provincial taxes and $1,558 in federal taxes. Combined, both governments were taxing minimum wage Ontarians $2,400. Following the definitions above, minimum wage workers were being taxed into poverty. <laughs> $2,400. I'm pretty sure the working poor could really use that extra $2,400 a year. Or... When broken down, comes down to $200 a month. And that's on the lower end of it, folks. So, you know, and that's just your income tax. Think about everything that you do outside of that, even just your in income tax. And think about how many things, well, basically almost everything you touch or you consume is taxed in one way or another. So, the government gets a whole lot more even on the back end. The front end in income tax, yeah, they get you there. But they also get you at every other point that you use your money or your disposable income to consume anything, whether it's your food, groceries, gasoline, your car. I mean, you know, everything is taxed nowadays, right? So come on. Anyways, like I say, this is a great article. Um, I'll place a link to it in the description of the video below. I think it's actually one of those articles that are definitely worth reading and continuing on. So I highly recommend you do so. But once again, the most important information has been presented and thank goodness for CBC allowing this contributor to get their opinion out there so at least Canadians are seeing at least a little bit of pushback, a little bit of pushback and an, a counter narrative to the establishment and the pretense that, oh, minimum wage is the only way you can help out the poor. No, as a matter of fact, <laughs> these two ways, hey, there's a whole lot of other ways than even these two suggested to help out the poor. But I'll deal with that in other videos and at other times. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.